Ben's top. Seth's middle one, though. Don't read into that. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host, Jake. Today, I'm joined by Brag from Braggio. Hello. And Ben from Northern TCG. Hello. How was our week in Yu-Gi-Oh? Let's start with you, Brag. How's your week been? Uh, it's been all Pokemon. Perfect. Yeah, this was a Pokemon week for us. Ah, okay. So this question's redundant. So no, glad you told redundant. me in advance. <laughs> I also can't remember what happened to Locals on Tuesday. I remember what happened to Locals on Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, um, even I... You have an eidetic memory. How do you forget what happened at Locals well, on Tuesday? I remembered. I just had to think about it. <laughs> anyway, did, so you did, did you stream on Monday? No, no. Um, so, yeah, it was, I was doing Pokemon this week, and, like, this week instead, so no stream this week. Okay. I'll probably get back to it next week, but I'm also super tempted to, to stream me doing Pokemon shit. But that's a question for another time. Uh, yeah, I hope yeah, it's a question I'm super next. neutral, just watching. I'm going to watch um, London tonight. Because uh, I'm keen, I'm keen I'm keen to watch that coverage better than this morning, but we'll get to we'll that. We'll get to that in a second. Ben, I also played Pokemon this week. We can have a little bit of a divergent rant about the regional and justify these maps that are here. No, these are the these are the last regional we went to. I know, well, but they're still Pokemon. Yeah, these are Melbourne maps. Um, so I, it made YCS seem like it was run well. <laughs> Yeah. Jake almost did a spit take because <laughs> that was not the answer that I was expecting. Uh, I no. thought you were going to say it so ran like dog shit. With like, a well, quarter of the players, it was somehow run worse. And I I get that like two judges had COVID, so they were running on uh-huh. a two judges down system. But like it started late, so they were late to get everyone in the doors, and like they kept having like a security person was like, guys, don't worry. The line's gonna move quickly. It did not move quickly. Um, so yeah, despite the uh, yeah, also yeah, despite the fact that you had to pre-register online, pre-submit your deck list online, it still took fucking ever to get everyone in the door. And it was like, and that wasn't my memory of Melbourne either. Melbourne was like, it took a while for them to actually get going, but once yeah. the line was moving, it was moving. Ah, uh, so that wasn't that was an IC, yeah. Or was that in Town Hall? No, that was that, that was, was the Town, Town Hall, Hall Town Hall? Yeah. yeah, Town Hall was, yeah, there was a line, but it was pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah. Ah. This was a line probably three times as long, and it moved hard probably twice as slowly. Yeah. yeah, it... Like, and I wasn't at the end of the line, by all means. I was relatively in the middle of kind of the entry pack. Yeah. And, like, I got in the door, was like, yep, cool. Took me maybe half an hour to get from the line to the door. Jeez. Uh... And then the event was supposed to start at, I think, 9.30, 10. Mm. The event started at 11.30. Mm. Um, rounds took forever. It's 50-minute rounds with turns. So, like, naturally that takes time. But there was also then, like, just 20-minute gaps between rounds where we waited for pairings, which is uh. what normally happens at a Yu-Gi-Oh event with a 1,000 players. This event had 250 players, and it took a lot longer than normal. And then between seemingly... My only logic is that because they had multiple events happening at once, so they had VGC happening at once, they had juniors and seniors, and then they had Pogo, after round five, they just abandoned the event. Like, the main event got abandoned. And it's this is like five o'clock. So round one started at 11.30, it's now five o'clock, and we've just completed round five. They seemingly, yeah, just stopped they were just like oh we're just gonna finish all the finals for all of the other events and then we'll come back and restart the main event later didn't tell anyone this and it was two hours two hours of waiting for the other ones to finish yes between the rounds and they could have phrased it better they're like okay let's have a a dinner break or like something like that well they did like just like just communicating it at all would have been great but they could have like covered that and like gone oh instead of this being a two hour gap where we don't have the staff to run multiple things at once so they're gonna just shut one down we'd be like okay tcg go have lunch and dinner we'll be back in about hour and a half two hours um the rest of you stay yes so we can finish your shit you also weren't allowed to bring outside food into the venue which is a normal thing that's normal yep except they closed the indoor food vendor at five yeah about the time where they said okay you guys wait around for two hours exactly at that time (laughs) literally exactly at that time uh and then all the vending machines broke (laughs) 
I was like, me and Ke- me and Kevin go up and we're like, oh, let's go to the shop and we'll get a snack. The security guard's like, oh, you can't go over here. Uh, the shop's closed. And we're like, no problem. So I went to the vending machine. I was like, oh, this vending machine's like actually not that expensive. It's like $2.80 for a packet of chips. Like, yeah. it's a lot for like shop's price. But for a vending machine, that's pretty good prices. Especially in a stadium in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, and it was broken. What was super <laughs> weird as well is that they kind of stressed earlier in the day, no lunch breaks, no lunch breaks, we're going right through, there's heaps of you, which is kind of weird, it's only 250 people. Not yeah. many. Uh, yeah, Not many. it was... Also, they needed 14 rounds for a 250 people event. What? Oh, because they, they, cut they allow out. IDs. Yeah, they allow for you to draw yeah. intentionally, and they cut to a top 8 instead of a top 32. I... Yeah, I don't get top eight cut. Also, top eight cut for them kind of restricts, and you see the same name over and over. I'm wondering if it is the people that are able to strategically ID and the same people that have respectable matchups, um, as opposed to a top 32 where you'd see more fresh faces. This is the same in all card games, but at the Pokemon event, I saw this a lot more because it's a much smaller room and you can pretty much see most interactions. Uh, The better players that typically top the events will call a judge on you immediately. Yeah. Like, the moment a minor infraction happened, they were like, judge. Because in that game as well, it's a two-price penalty on a P minor. So, like, you do, it's a game loss for a minor misstep. So, yeah, they will yeah. Like, be down your throat immediately. I don't... Like, okay. Prize penalties is actually kind of cooked. Imagine in Yu-Gi-Oh! with life point penalty. Like, it's just... it. You it flip the no, game. There's no equivalent. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so... It doesn't feel right. Yeah. Maybe we should introduce it. Life, life point penalties. Point. <sighs> it doesn't matter. Life points are free. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, and you deliberately yeah. do that and there's not caring. Yeah. Life points are effectively money in Yu-Gi-Oh! And then you get Whereas, cut. I mean, and then... Yeah, yeah, point. but the closer it gets to time... The more your money that's, system that's matches, valid. yeah. Like the, I guess the equivalency would be, and if you were life point penalized specifically for game three, if you commit an infraction in game one, in game three, and game three be... is likely where you're more likely to make mistakes because exactly. you're getting closer to yep. time. You're pressured to keep things going, so keep people honest at least. Yeah, that's my only logic. Is that that would be the only way that would transfer. And yeah, that was just my observation from the event. What's going to be so crazy is we're playing in this tournament for, um, for cash. Yeah, they also yeah do cash prizing. So, so, like, it's kind of weird that it's not as, like, that it's smaller and yeah. less... Maybe it doesn't need um, cash um, prizing if it's just as popular without. Yeah, you get doesn't need cash prizing. No one goes to Pokemon events. Which is yeah, so weird. It's, that's weird. Like, it's a bigger I th- IP. Like, I think. It, I think it's literally just because of how small brand Pokemon is. I I think grand total in the room there was probably like five hundred people, because VGC was. But yeah, they're split up against. VGC what, was bigger than all games. Also, oh. another another complaint I have about this event. I got really annoyed about this event. The room was probably had enough table space for four hundred players, hmm. comfortably four hundred players. They chose to only use two thirds of the tables and have everyone packed in like sardines. <laughs> Whilst there was a bunch of tables behind us just empty. Yeah. Full set up tables everywhere just not being used. Just uh, in case you had a horde chairs, of people yeah. that are like, can we play? Yeah, chairs were at the <laughs> tables. The only defense they had was, oh, we've got side events for that. The side events are on the second day. Yeah. When only 32 players are invited back yeah. for day two. Wouldn't it logically make sense of, oh, we're using, like, that you do the partying in between days of, okay, yes. yeah, sweet, that's main event that tables now, that's there, and Instead, then let's utilize the space. No. They put the pogo space right next to the, the match slip things, so, and that's, and it's nowhere near you, like, to, for you guys to submit your match slips. You have to go to the game, other side of the room. The other side of the room, and then it's like, oh, well, you clear off because you can't be here, it's, it's, it's high traffic. It's like, well, no, I'm here to watch my friends, and we're allowed to watch we're allowed to spectate yeah. like that's the whole reason why you give out spectator passes hmm. so someone's paid ten dollars for a spectator pass that sure they get a couple of packs but get out <laughs> like it's yeah, just so, so weird. no logistically planned out sections like yeah. you would think have the pogo players well away from match slip area that way there's less bumping and yeah. all that kind of nonsense another random thing that i realized from the event that 
possibly highlights how small... We will talk about Yu-Gi-Oh soon, I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Not even 19> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> We're complementing Yu-Gi-Oh here. Yeah. That's what this is. So By this, degrading another game. <laughs> this made me kind of realise how small brain Pokemon is. <laughs> they had medics and stuff on site that were required multiple times. There were multiple injuries at this card game. Injuries? Event. Yes. Is this the soccer of card games? Do people, like, fake injuries in order to uh, get... Apparently, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, got, I got a paper cut. I'm so sorry. I got a paper cut. Uh, oh, no, there's blood oh, in your cards. That's marked. <laughs> <laughs> I blood in your cards, sorry. <laughs> sorry, there's blood in your cards. That's marked, though, now. I'm going to call a judge uh, to press penalty. Uh, this I is just ridiculous. I think that them and, and Yu-Gi-Oh definitely has room to improve. They have way to improve. Just I don't know what to do at this point. Like at this event, I had a judge call on me, and I, in all my years of playing this card game, I have never received a penalty from a judge. And the judge came up and was like, "Yeah, that's that's a penalty." And I was like, "What was it again?" Uh, I like KO'd the guy's Pokemon, and. I hadn't resolved my attack before taking my prizes. Oh! Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so literally just a sequencing issue. Yes. Two prize penalty. Auto lose. Literally auto lose in the matchup. And I was like, okay. And then the judge came back later and was giving an explanation to someone. And he was like, oh yeah, no, like, it only doesn't matter if it's completely... If... There's no difference in where the resolution happens, then there wouldn't have been a penalty. And I was like, there was literally no difference. Every single Pokemon I have gets KO'd in one shot. Resolving this effect does nothing. And he would just like walk away. And I was like, okay, sure. But yeah, that's. So there we go. A lot of card games, a lot of problems. And I lost Yu Gi Oh! Locals on Tuesday. I lost the final to Jake. That's Jake's week in Yu Gi Oh! Oh, wow. What did you play? Branded. Play Branded. I bricked real bad. I was going to build something on Monday, couldn't be fucked, and then ended up that I shouldn't have. Um, yeah, he drew terribly. Both games, um, I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Both well, games, in, I was used to one hand trap. In fairness. Jake in, had one hand trap. Yeah, I did. Um, so, in the first game, there was a bit of grind. It's yeah. just that I had responses for everything. Yeah, you went first, opened the nuts, and I couldn't disrupt you. Yeah. So it was just like... And then game two was disrupt. like, he activated field spell, I ashed it. And then he set four back round past. This is the curiosity where I had... I sat there and was like, Is Jake a small-brained? Why did you side in Lightning Storm? Uh, because you play Protect the Castle variant. So my idea is to in clear... In defense position. Hmm? In defense. I'm not there. That's... I'm not after the monster. I'm after the back row. I, I can out the monster. Okay. But if you get birth and all the other nonsense, mm -hmm. then there's no point to me outing the monster because you just rebuild. So the idea is... So it's to stop I, the lances um, and shit. Yeah, to stop the lances, the imperm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. Because, again, I can still out the monster. Yeah. yeah. I was just very specifically like, well, this has I... only worked in this exact situation, and I don't know why. Because I opened field spell, uh, birth, theosis, and then both traps. Yeah. Ooh. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> this is if you get if you don't get Ash your friend doesn't have a hand trap you're off to the races your hand kind of sucks but you're off to the races my hand was real bad but even if uh, I mean lost. well even if you bait in a gate or if you fetch yeah lightning storm's alright surely yeah. again I only put lightning storm in yeah. to get rid of the back row I just thought there were better options like an evenly matched like done the same evenly building. matched was also in there okay yeah. however because you didn't have the monster. Actually, I think I even had it in my hand. Like, my hand was full of you-know-me-yes cards. Okay. <laughs> and it just so happened you didn't have the monster, so there was no need for an even Yeah, link. I know. I know. I had nothing. Oh, well, so you won locals? I did. Yeah. I did win locals. What'd you guess? Um, nothing. Bugger. Anyone get any ulties in the room? Hayden did. Hayden yes. pulled a Hayden got ulti cherries. cherries. Yeah. Oh. I was like, damn. Now there's two ulti cherries in our locals. Yeah, Ben's fiendin'. Too, too many. <laughs> too, that's the too best ulti in that set. And that's saying something. I kind of want them. But, like, I don't want to pay a lot for them. So I don't think the they're worth anything. Oh, Cherries, God, no. Cherries is the best one to get as, like, one to have. But um, Ray is the best one to pull for oh, resale. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, people pay ridiculous money for yeah. Ray. 
Especially because no funny. other locals gets them anymore, so now we control the market on Ray. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, for some reason we just get the old shit. Um, but I also find it funny. People are trying to charge so much for Luba, but I haven't seen one sell it. People are like, $80 for my Luba, please. And I was like, hey, Jake, 35 bucks. Done. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, yours was damaged. I did hit Nick the corner. <laughs> But yeah, I yeah, and like people were trying to charge ninety hundred dollars for them. I still would have like, just sold that to you for like cheap. Oh, uh, but that's still like that's like eighty bucks is insurance on the pro- like on a possible price rise. Not that I think of Lucas has a price rise coming. Like, I can't see it happening. Um, never know. Surely five years they go they go back at it again. Aluba Aluba Altis go to twenty like two hundred bucks. Yeah, they'll just keep redoing the law. Yeah, so on the next, like on True. the next one. Continuing. Fusion. Okay, yeah. Disgusting. Fusion. Anyway, um, so, um, moving on to news, we start with, uh, I suppose we start with the OCG ban list. Yeah, the, by, we missed it by we, that much. I don't actually don't know how long it was. We missed by a few hours. Uh, it was, yeah, I think we finished here at about 10 past 7, yep. and it didn't drop until about 10.30. Yeah. Oh, I thought it dropped a couple hours later. No, because I no. went to sleep and it still hadn't released. Oh, what the hell was I looking at then? Good question. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, coming into effect as of yes, well, as of today, <laughs> really, um, I think. Yes, as of today. Uh, so we have banned. Just uh, before we get into this, I was kind of disappointed by this, so continue. I, mean, I don't know how. Um, so we have Jet banned. No, not Jet. I do that every time. Elf. Sprite. Elf is banned. Jet also gets hit on this ban list. <laughs> we'll talk about him in a sec. Is Elf banned in Master Duel yet? No. Uh, no. We'll be soon. Yeah. We haven't got tea yet, so... I reckon they'll kill it before, surely. I, I don't know. I, I actually agree. I reckon they're going to hit the issues is before they hit them. But yeah. anyway. I think they'll also be an elf before then. But anyway, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's just so good. Uh, limited, there's a few. Uh, so strap yourselves in. Uh, we have Glove Bulb, Sprite Blue, uh, Merly, uh, Havnus, mm-hmm. uh, the other Shufflers, uh, like the... Yeah. Medora and the Kelbeck. Yeah, yeah, the so they have similar. Hit. So they have they have our Everything's now. a one, but they also have the fields for a one. Yeah, uh, Blaster, Lebellion, Druis, and uh, what's the new Bold one? Baldrake. Baldrake and oh. Skill Drain. <laughs> they put Skill Drain back, which needed to happen. Yeah, Skill Drain shouldn't be at three. It needs to go back to one. Absolutely not. The fact that it's at three here is. Why like... does that seem like you disagree with me? There, you should have said yes. That is true. One hundred percent, Ben. Yes. Um, it's the weird thing about the English language. Yes or no is still agreeing with you in that particular instance. No, we have not, a boss monster with like seven effects, and skill drains the problem. Yes. Yes. <laughs> these, these are never, they're never happy. Also, <laughs> you, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm not getting into this argument because you have lightning storm for skill drain. What do you worry? I'm not getting into this anyway. Semi limited. <laughs> Activate solemn judgment. Anyway. Semi limited, we have the Errata of Ancient Fairy Dragon. Uh, Should be at three anyway. The Ptolemaeus. You're never going to play more than one. Mm. Uh, Skull Dread Dragon. Actually, interesting. That was limited and it went up. So. Yep. Uh, Dragon Hawk to two. That's dumb. Yep. Don't like it. They still have Colossus. That's fucking stupid. Uh, Gazelle. Oof. Again, dumb. Steam the Cloak. Yeah, that can be at three. Nadir Servant. Wait. That went up from one, yeah? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Spellbook of... Is it Judgment? Uh, is judgment. that one Judgment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gone up. Uh, and Runic Fountain. The one where oh. I hit Runic Fountain. And, like, in a lot of decks in OCG, Runic, you only play two. Yeah. That's... If, if you're mixing it with something, you play two. Well, the fact that they're paying attention to it is a good thing, because if it becomes more problematic, they'll yeah. be like, mmm, whack. I think... I think there will be a day where Runic is on the ban list you know the thing that scares me about runic is that on the searches yep. it says a runic field spell not the specific field spell oh, that's just so they've they left can, it open for later they can ban fountain and bring out something that's worse good they do that now in built <laughs> help the own like their own deck to be like look if this gets out of hand we can ban it and just power really something weaker now we're gonna start reading uh runic law to figure out what it'll ban it'll be runic spring <laughs> It'll be a pee guy um, for fountain instead. It'll be a, naked, a statue of a naked man peeing. Yes. Runic. Runic uh, what are they called? Because well, usually they're little um, Cherub. cherubs. Yeah. Okay. Peeing. Very key. Runic peeing. 
Runic piss. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, unlimited. We have uh, Galatea. Kaga- Kagari is that? That's nice Kagari. Yeah. Oh my I've, god. It's been so long since I've had to interact with strikers, which is like my favorite thing ever. That I forgot what his name was. What's yeah. engage out over there? I forget. Hmm? What's engage out? Two. Yeah, in the OCD, it's still well, a two. They're playing with fire, aren't they? They are. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Swappeth Froggeth to three. Uh, <laughs> Yara Garasi still on the ban list. to three. Uh, no one plays Yara. And the Eldritch Golden Land. Skill drain going to one. They need support. Yeah, it kind of does beat like that. Yeah. <laughs> Eldritch sucks without skill drain, so let's just give him this stuff back. What if I should play Eldritch? No. Well, what's what stops? Because obviously it has. There's not a great matchup, but surely you can overcome it with skill drain. Yeah. Ah, oh, fine. I'll figure something out. <laughs> Look, I thought I wanted to see more on this ban list in terms of stuff actually getting banned. I wanted to see full blood and like ultra relevant cards I, banned. I reckon yeah. that's pretty heavy though. That's pretty heavy, but I wanted to see like full. Nah, none of it. <laughs> We'll, we'll act, like the first week we will see uh, one of all of them and uh, cash tier or tier like we'll see it's, that it's we'll see that thing. list but I don't think it'll do anything no surely no. not well grass is still a thing as well oh I don't I, that was actually something I was surprised to get here on the span list yeah I remember we talked about the it last card week yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah true yep yeah. instead oh, still fully legal if anything it's better because Skulldred is now at four so they can uh, two rather so they can ah, play do four. it again do it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Skull Dreads. However, that's apple. not the only ban list we have to discuss. Because uh, as of the 10th of April, the Master Duel ban list will come into effect. Uh, quite a few similarities between the two, so... Uh, they change subjects so quick. He's like, Whoa, change subjects. I mean, I mean, it's not really a change of subject. Ah, it's just a away. change of scenery. Uh, so, going to one, we have Skill Drain, Rivalry, and Gozen match. That's fine. Look, I've moved, I've moved on from them on Master Duel, but it's just... It, it feels like I'm without a safety net now. They punish yeah, I, you I, so I, much more in Master Duel 2. Yeah. I oh. I can't go back to a safe space. I have to sit here with... Well, I have to wait till tier, I guess. Uh, I don't want to skill drain a bit of Master Duel, to be honest. Also going to one. One I understand, one I don't. Yeah. Uh, Herald of Orange Light. I get it. Everyone's running the Shizu Fairy, so it's just a free negate that also gets your engine going. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Flandry's Magnificent Map. I do not understand why they put that card to once. It's, <laughs> it's probably because they do the ban list based on what's popular. But and people are probably this? still trying to make it work. Yeah, so... they, they must be saying something somewhere in the usage that yeah. indicates it. People must Surely... still be trying to make it work. I, I, any Flunder player that I've versed in that time frame... Yeah, it's an easy win. Yeah. But it's they're still trying to play it, Joe. That's the problem. <laughs> they're like... Probably like the fourth most represented deck on the back end, and Konami's like, "What is happening? Can can you guys stop?" <laughs> stop. Yeah. Uh, going to two, we have Runic Fountain, uh, Runic Tip, just the tip, just the tip, just the tip. Uh, be the confused two of them. Ping. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pss. you can use tip to search Runic Ping. <laughs> I mean, that's how you would run. Yes. You find the piss through the tip. Anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Biology ne- here with CPG. <laughs> uh, Necroface going to two. Um, that is the deck that I was referencing a couple of weeks ago. The sixty card Punk Shizu. Yep. Because uh, it sort of does all the punk stuff and milling <laughs> stuff, and then you banish the Necroface to turn your Thunder Dragon engine on. What's with <laughs> Japan just not wanting to ban uh, Chaos Dragon? The the eight sync. They still let the chaos yeah, stuff. I don't know. Yeah, they just insist on not banning this card. Japan probably should. I don't know if Master Duel should yet. They should be banning both. I hope they don't do it in Master Duel. I just crafted a Royal Rare. <laughs> Plus, you can get, re- get re- refund on it, surely. No, that's not the point. I still want it. <laughs> I want it. If it go, yeah, if it gets banned, you get a bonus on your refund too. Woo! I still want it though. Anyway, uh, and the last seven limit is Dragonhawk 2. <laughs> Again. Uh, actually, no, that's from 1. I think it was a one before. Yeah, they're, they're raising them up. Yeah. They want you to make that one of Colossus. Yeah, it's kind of free. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then going to three, there's a few cards here. We've got Multifaker, uh, Soul Eating Oviraptor, Super Poly, uh, Mist Valley of the Apex Avian. No, Divine Wind of the Mist Valley is what it's actually called. Uh, Galatea, 
Spellbook of Judgment, and Spiral Quick Fix. Next year, when that game finally gets all that dino support, I'll be there. <laughs> what makes Super Poly good again? It oh, kind of sucks now. Brandon's still very much a thing. Yeah, yeah, but you don't play fusions in other stuff. I know, but you're not using it to play fusions in other stuff. You're doing it to out the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't be bothered to put those fusions in your extra deck, so you just don't worry about it. Like, it's a good card. Like, this thing, and it should be better. Like, but sitting in a three and just going and not having the natural reaction of, oh, that's crazy, is just kind of weird. You just draw the I think the other thing is, too, we've had Super Poly at three for some time. So we... And because the variance out in the normal format is so wide, you probably don't acknowledge it as much. Yeah. But there used to be a point where, like, if someone drew the one or one of or two of Super Poly, it was like, oh, my God. Yeah, like... But then there's a three, and now we just don't care. Yeah. Nearly. No, or just it's just a part of the game. You just go, oh, yeah, yeah, they're super polished, and that's that, that's all cool. Like, yeah. Every, is everything else just busted? That is just like, oh, well, super poly's fine. A little bit. Yeah. I think it's because fusion is such a niche now, and, like, there isn't as many... Well, there's still some generic targets, but, like, it's just not as easy as it was in, like, say, August format. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was... Oh, excuse me that one comes into effect as of april 10th um beyond that though there's been a heap of stuff changed in master duel as of late um so yeah just after the uh duelist cup they brought in the newest solo mode which is the end of the world legacy uh storyline oh we should do that then yeah it's it's really long yeah. it's really long all right so a lot of it is just story there's like four or five different just story things you have to click um but the rewards are actually really cool this time around um so you get i think two different sets of sleeves um one has like the artwork of the world legacy which is like oh, um, yeah, like ibn the doggo with the light yeah going yeah, up yeah. The middle. that's it's a really awesome. nice artwork yeah um and then the other sleeve is mech knight avramax oh i think there's another one that has dingisu on it actually i think Ooh, another sleeve that has dingisu and an icon for dingisu as well if you want to have your thing as that that as well um, you also get uh, a new mate, which is the spirit of Galatea. Wow. So not Galatea with the scythe; it's the yeah, after she did. Yeah, yeah, that one. She did. So you're yeah, gonna say um, Geese's horse? No, uh, law-wise, that does not exist um, outside of Dingisu. Gisu exists, yeah. but not Ding. Poor Ding. I want Ding, mate. Ding dead. Not to be confused with PE guy. anyway uh, <laughs> uh and then there's a um stage as well that's the it says it's the world legacy key but it kind of just looks like mech knight blue's sword in a little rock thing it's that odd. is the key i know he's excalibur he pulled the sword from merlin merlin yep merlin yep merlin <laughs> <laughs> yes i know what just i pulled said a run out of it <laughs> yes nice guy <laughs> Isn't that bad? You shouldn't even go to the hospital with the sword still in. The key. Sorry. Yeah, definitely don't take it out. Yeah, but they'll judge you if you go to the doctors and you're like, I need you to remove this key, they've please. Seen, they've seen worse. It depends, it depends on where it is. They've seen <laughs> Ding and his horse. No, Gisu and his horse. They wouldn't question a key in a Merlin. And, anyway... Um, also in Master Duel, um, they released the next Duel Trial. Uh, it does expire before you would be due to stream, just, just so that. you're aware. Um, so, this one's a bit more interesting for... Well, maybe interesting. So, it's again the loner decks. You do three, you get a pack, so it's low impact, low reward kind of thing. But do you but, know this about this one? I thought you would have been on this straight away. Yeah, I thought for sure you would have known already. Uh, this one is alternate win cons. Oh. So the pre-cons are Destiny Board, Exodia, and Venomanaga. Yeah, I was going to say. Snakes! Um, it's actually kind of easy. Um, I played this at Oasis. <laughs> yeah. Close close to it. Uh, there's a couple of cards in there I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. No, there's a creature swap for some reason. Uh, yeah, the what, creature swap was weird. Well, wait. Is there, well, is there a searcher? Is there a searcher monster? Is it like the old school, you give them the searcher monster attack over it? Oh. Like, is there no? No, I mean, Sangan's not wouldn't be no. in there, but no, like Sangan's Sangan not there. So the main deck monsters for the Exodia one are Card Card D, um, the Spirit one that lets you look at the top card of your deck before you draw it, and you can either keep it on top or put it to the bottom. <laughs> kind of garbage. Um, you've got Ecclesia, 
because you've also got Nadir and you've got um, oh my god Look at punishment. Go. yeah it's strange for them to get yeah, yeah, an so actual I've, engine yeah don't know what creatures uh, uh, but also outs destiny board upstart goblin any reckless greed uh, spirit of Yadagarasu um, <laughs> I think it's miracle dig I think it's like if yeah, you yeah. take damage you draw a card and if they destroy it by the set you get to draw a card that's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. I was thinking of that one. I can't remember what that one... Oh, that one's like oh, um, heroic defense or something. It's like, if you would take damage, don't take damage and you draw a card. <laughs> um, and then it's got obliterate. To be combined with Spirit Barrier, I think, was the little old little tip card thing. Just the tip? Yep. Just the tip. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, and, and the way I did it, I played each of them. Um, Exodia was probably the easiest one because the other two weak cards suck. Well, the Destiny board support makes it a lot easier. Like, cause... oh yeah, I didn't How's think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this card here, the Continuous, um, lets you put stuff back in the deck to draw. Like, if you happen to draw any of the name pieces. Um, and then it sacks itself from the board to place a piece as well. Okay, I was so like, you cheated out a turn does sooner. That work. Yeah, so it jumps ahead, and then you you pretty much always have to finish the trap, from what I remember from yeah. the, watching those old videos. But yeah, um, this one was really easy too. Um, I just used Obliterate to keep bouncing like his card card D and his um, Ecclesia and stuff back yeah. to hand, so he couldn't do anything. Because every time I did it, I did a mirror match for some reason. It just it was just the way oh. it worked. Because um, everyone was playing Zodiac. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so what and what I ended up doing is I was I had four pieces back to my hand due to um, this guy's effect. I can't remember what his name is. He's like um, tribute in Exodia piece to summon him and then every legendary Exodia incarnate. Yeah, that one. Yep. Um, so yeah, I had four pieces and then I had an Adir servant. So an Adir servant at Ecclesia sending Entis and then Entis pop my obliterate. Obliterate ends the last piece back to my hand. Okay. Yeah. I miss card card D. Yeah, I nearly made the mistake of thinking I could attack with Kargad D on an empty board yeah. first and then use its effect. Yeah, it's, no. <laughs> it's, a free, it's free chip damage. Ooh. <laughs> Why are no draw? I liked playing Venom in um, one of the old video games, but I can't imagine... Yeah. I can't imagine if there's even a, like a win con of the opponent possible that it would be good. Um, so in this one, I couldn't actually get the Venominaga um, engine to go for me. So what I ended up doing was just summoning um, the Venom King yep. with like 4k attack and just punching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. It just did the ting. Um, so yeah, again, low investment, low reward, but it's a thing you can do anyway, which is kind of cool. Um, as of today as well, uh, they also have uh, some Buguska related product. Yes. Um, so you can get sleeves, you can get an icon, it's and you can get... terribly tired though. It is, it's not drunk. Yeah. I wonder if it's drunk in Japan. In, yeah. Let's, um, all, Surely not. let's all use VPNs. What's the code? We'll even... Uh, link in the description. I don't think there's a I don't, code. I don't even think that works. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure it works either. Yeah. To get the background, which is like purely an aesthetic thing when you're not dueling, is 250 gems. And I'm gonna <laughs> That's... <do it. laughs> that is I, that, that the icon. I, I like my... I, I'll never change my slaves, I don't think. But I would get the icon and that background. Speaking of a third burn, ban list, they banned Master Duel, Cross Duel. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I was going to bring that up later, but uh, Ben's uh, decided to skip ahead. Jake's really. out here masturbating to Dingusu's. I was mentor. looking up the rest of the news. You Dingusu? fucking no, Dingusu. maniac. Gisu. Gisu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I looked oh, over and Jake's just gotcha. like looking at a picture of Dingusu's face. I was face scrolling and I was like, through. I wasn't looking this is at what it. Jake would do. You absolute with or without the horse. Fuck without head. the horse. Anyway, as Jake's Ben has really interrupted me in order to bring up. Um, as of September 4th, uh, the Cross Duel will be ending their service uh, because it was such a popular game. I I don't like it. Dude, I don't dude. like doing it. I, I like having the option of logging in, playing something, and going out of shit. It was so bad. But it, it's, I'm sure someone, if uh, unless if there's like zero people playing it, like if there's even a thousand people playing it, keep it up. There's no way it loses money. Dual generation servers, I think, are still on. That, that, that shows how bad this must have been doing. Yeah. I'm fairly sure you can still play dual generations online. I it didn't have a lot going for it. No. But look, I mean, if it was just Rust Jewels, 
in in across dual format, sure. But just changing the attacks and the effects of everything, it just they tried too hard. Yeah, it it became just it's like oh, you slapped a Yu-Gi-Oh skin on a different game. Oh, one hundred percent. That's is, what they did. This is That's their exactly history. What they did. And I think when we talked about um, cross duels a little while ago, because we all downloaded it that night when we were watching fucking YCS, I said that they've tried too hard and like they've fallen into the same pitfall where they make a game that's not related to Yu-Gi-Oh with Yu-Gi-Oh assets and now that people have Master Duel so they can play something that's approximate to the game without having to play yeah. the actual game they, ain't gonna they have no interest in these life side games because they have a better option right. um, just play the actual with, game with that in mind um, two things as well to keep in mind um, they won't be selling any more crystals so even up to September you cannot purchase anything within the game everything just free no they're oh. just not allowing people to buy in further so like you'll still be able to earn rewards and crystals but you won't be able to purchase them just give everyone full power no one's gonna play it anyway may as well get to experience it at its well, best well you say that but potentially some people may because they are planning on giving long-running players of cross duel games rewards in duel links and master duel um such as stuff to bring like what stuff if, to bring across what oh. if us, the long-term players of Crosstool, who downloaded it on the day it came out, I wonder what the threshold is. Still have it installed. Yeah, <laughs> it's installed somewhere, and I played it uh, yeah, three mine, or four hours. Mine's still installed. I yeah, I probably played maybe three hours. Yeah, so I wonder what the threshold is. That'd be cool. I'm gonna be, be I played three hours, and I still don't know how the game works. Other do I? There's too much going on. Yeah. Anyway, you move? moving back to Master Duel, because I wasn't fucking finished, we do have a new pack. It is isn't Tier Element. It is called Passage of the Sun. Uh, so we're getting support for Wing Dragon of Ra. Uh, we're getting the Crawler level 6. Uh, we get the Witchcrafter support, which gives them the fusion, which actually is really good for the deck. Uh, and the Maya Kashi support, which is the Link 3 and the trap that stops you from doing most things. And you trade all of them for a picture of Gisu? No, not at all. I should just play Wing Dragon I think you would. No, I wouldn't. Anyway. Um, sure, Wing Dragon of Ra can... Can Wing Dragon of Ra, no. after, with support, win no. one game at a Locals? At a Locals? Well, yeah, mm. you'd lose your first one to Cash Tier or Brandon. Yeah, you'd lose yeah. your second one to, like, Labyrinth. Yep. Maybe even lose your third to Deskbot. Um, but then your <laughs> fourth round, um, someone would have left already, so you get the buy win. <laughs> well... Yes. <laughs> you are right though, Despot is a genuinely better deck than Ra. <laughs> oh, it's significantly better. Oh, have you seen the Verna it's, it's, it's so actually... yeah. With Verna, if you don't open a hand trap, you're dead. You just get you get hand whipped yeah. and you're just like, Oh, I don't have a hand anymore. I'm... I, so the first time I versed it was obviously with Hayden, yeah. like seeing the Verna cells. I didn't realize just how good Earth support it was. Yeah, yeah. it's just free. Yeah. And the yeah. one non Earth you play in that deck doesn't activate actually absurd yeah like because <laughs> the cost seems so high i just always assumed they were bad but it's like oh i discard one but then i search another one and reborn another one and special another one from deck like they're yep. all ridiculous yep. absolutely bonkers cards Poor. um so um yeah we are currently uh like halfway through each of the ycs's i was hoping they'd have a breakdown they don't uh but what are we thinking of the streams so far um i only watched sorry Oh, okay. I only watched um, Los Angeles this morning. Um, eh, like they they have the bigger names and a couple of the voice actors and stuff getting around, but no, the the stream quality has been eh. So Nadir is the commentator for Europe. One of the commentators, oh. yes. And Tombox is a recorder is a commentator for North America. Who's who's Tombox? The guy that Lachlan doesn't like. Oh, they're gonna be more specific. Uh, <laughs> Oh, MST TV. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, he, yeah okay. Yeah. I hadn't seen him on the stream because when I was watching, it was huh. Billy Break. Oh, okay, he was commentating and then he did like the post game interview. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. Because he, he interviewed a guy and he was like, so you're doing really well here. And he was like, yeah, I, I'm doing surprisingly well. I've won my first four games. And Tom Fox is like, oh, so you, you think you can maybe take out the event? And he was like, no, I think I've just gotten lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so good i love yeah. the candid responses yeah um but yeah there is a huge difference in the uh quality of the streams um as you mentioned like they've got a few decent things going on within the actual event in america but i oh. think there's a lot more catered towards 
the online audience for the European stream than there is for the US. I only watched the US one very briefly this morning, but from what I could see, just between matches, it was just shots of the crowd, and that's all they were doing. Yeah. Whereas in the European one, they're doing guess a card, they're doing time wizard, they're doing quizzes with the judges and stuff. Like, it's a lot more involved with the people that are watching online as opposed to, well, there might be stuff going on there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems a lot more uh, broadcast centric. Yeah. than what the American one is. Typically as well, the European commentators have the, how do you put it, uh, charisma to carry interactive segments. Yeah, there is that. Like, Billy Brake is a good Yu-Gi-Oh player and an intelligent person, but he's not the most charismatic person in the world. And he's very difficult to look at. And so is uh, <laughs> the other guy. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the other guy. Jerome. Jerome, yes, again, intelligent person, not not much charisma. At least they pronounce stuff correctly. But yes. you are right; those the European commentators do they do put on a good show. Yeah. Like, and I, as I said, I'm probably gonna watch it tonight because yeah. what else am I gonna do? The oh. um, good one. Oh wait, no. F1 Actually, speaking of what time? Is it? Oh, uh, three a.m. Yeah, three yeah, a.m. Cool, 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 cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just double checking. I forgot where I was going. Oh, in the US stream, though, they did just, like, do a cut to the South American one. They were like, we're um, going to go and check in with the South Com yeah. with the South American team. And yeah. then they moved over to South America. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. but are they actually streaming matches or is it literally no, just no, checking no, in? With, they like, just checked in yeah. with them to discuss it. So, they would have so it's like segment. checking in with the weather girl in California. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. It's exactly yeah. what they <laughs> well, It would have been pre-recorded segments, but it's definitely better than nothing. They were pretty well produced as well and yeah. had some good content that was somewhat insightful. Like, nothing crazy, but I definitely appreciate that. It was really cool. I think it was in round two of the North American one as well. They When they interviewed the guy after the game, they were like, so how do you feel? And he was like, I didn't realize I was going to get put on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you guys did it. I suck. Oh, I've, I've watched some interesting matches. Um, so I, I feel so sorry for this kid because, like, I'm sure everyone was putting him on blast. Like, I get put on blast every time I'm on one of your videos for my plays. But this branded guy got put up against... Um, oh, what was his first matchup? I it wasn't Cash. It was... Um, what was the first matchup? Was it... Runic? I think oh, it was last night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what the other matchup was. But yeah, this poor Brandon kid, it was his first YCS and he got put up against the London champion on stream in round one. And the second they announced that, I was like, oh, this poor man. This Didn't... is going to be Jesse Cotton versus a child again. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally that, except they were a similar age. Didn't they experiment with seeding before? I was going to bring this up. I swear they've talked about seeding before, but they, oh, it must pretty... have fell way to tradition of like, no, we're effectively going to seed you anyway, but yeah. we're going to embarrass this 14-year-old on um, live fucking Twitch yeah. for because, funsies. Because they're not doing UDSs anymore. So if you um, won a UDS, any YCS you went to, you got a two-round buy. So you were But they're still by. doing VIP seeding, right? So they could just offer that instead as well? I don't know, but... But yeah, this poor dude, and like you could tell he wasn't 100% sure what his deck was doing, as many people point out to me, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, he went, um, so he did Brain of Fusion, he summoned Albion, sending Lubelion and Thingo. Uh, he went to, no, sorry, he didn't. He sent Light Hex so that he could make Dragoon for free. Yep. Um, he then activated Albion effect, and the Runic player had sided in Bestials, and he used the Bestial to target the Hex. Yep. <laughs> So, what he did was use Branding in Red, target the Albaz in Grave, mm -hmm. bring it back, and then um, banish something else in his hand and the Albaz in order to summon Lebellion. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't fix the Bestial banishing your target from Grave. Yeah. So then he's got to resolve his Albion, but he's banished the Albaz from Grave. Yeah. So now he has to get rid of the Lebellion. He just spent all his material summoning to make a Predator Plant. Yeah, 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 because there will be another. Yeah. If he just waited one interaction, he could have summoned the Lebellion with the Albion, yeah, and then put the Hex back as material and summoned the Dragoon anyway. 
He just got way too trigger happy. And then he went um, branded opening, tried to summon Albaz from deck. And I'm like, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> it's in real. There was so much going wrong. It's in real life version of being drunk and just clicking yes on Master Jewel. Like, oh no! <laughs> it, 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 was, it, was Result, yes. it was literally, oh, there's a button to click. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh. that guy was had his brain had descended so past past humanity that he now just only sees buttons available to click <laughs> it's like ah oh, yes this is a path he, yes oh, this is a path yeah. he's like ryan reynolds in free guy he put on the glasses and he could see the world around him this can be activated <laughs> i've activated it or he's i've got my 250th anniversary play mat i don't care <laughs> yeah exactly there is that there is that would there be is, nice there's 3600 players at london that's only mats. That's, oh yeah, that's, that's massive. A lot of those play mats in the market. It's a lot, and then you've got and the same one. ones in Bogota yeah. Yeah. and in and in LA, LA. I, I can remember them. where it was in America. Someone's gonna have them. Surely Tier Zero gets a hold of some of them. I can pick one up. There should be a few. Um, speaking briefly of Bogota, I haven't seen what the other YCSs have, but I have seen the giant cards that are available at Bogota. Oh, one of them's a shit. I think it's North America is garbage makes sense yeah uh so bogota has judgment dragon oh yeah uh, oh oh black rose dragon oh and the head of exodia oh they're, they're really <laughs> bizarre it so... feels like they've had them in a vault somewhere and then they've had to move the vault and when they did so they're like oh shit didn't I, know we had these i think the exodia is the starlight version from it you can't see the set code i already tried to look um, it's meant to be the version it's from... It's an L. No, oh, I don't know then. Huh. <laughs> I was going to say for something else. So, would that not be uh, two Edison prizes? Mm hmm Or maybe even you could do a pre-format prize and then alternately win con tournament prize. Yes. The I'm sure that's what they're planning. I they've, think... They've got a couple slabs here too. Yeah, they Starlight get... Starlight slabs. They get actual oh, fucking oh, prize God. Card. Can you cut them out, or do they have to stay in there? Uh, they're not stamped, so you can't use them. Ah. Um, they thought ahead. They thought ahead. I always want, like, you never would, but... The... Unless... Imagine, imagine you're halfway through cutting your sheet, and you sneeze, and you just put your blades of your scissors halfway through a starlight mask. Sell it, miscut. <laughs> miscut is an understatement. <laughs> miscut, by me. <laughs> The two full-size giant cards for North America are the Buster Blader... Oh, sorry, the Black Buster Soldier new one. Oh, oh okay. And the Hero all coming together. Oh, fusion. the Wake Up Heroes or whatever it is. Yeah, those are the two giants. And then they have a mid-size that I can't remember because I just immediately put it out of my mind. Why would hmm. they do the Gate Guardians? Anyone like facing the mid-size is sad. Gate Guardians Wait, did they do the Black Luster in Ultra or in Collector's Rare Giant? I think they're meant to be Collector's Rare Giants. That would be kind of cool. It's it kind of foiling. I don't think I have. If it's col it's probably just got silver on it. Yeah. Uh, disappointing. Uh, but yeah, um, really keen to get back and watch the uh, European stream tonight. Hopefully, it starts in a reasonable time again. Um, Eight o'clock. Yeah, that's what it started. Ah, oh, started hours time. ago then. Yeah, it's already finished. I can't believe that. One. Kashira. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it will be. The scenes. There's, there's the scenes. so much variance. Um, Labyrinth Sprite. No, not Labyrinth that. Sprite? I, I was going to say that. I always get them mixed up. I don't yeah. know how. They're very different. They came in the same set. One's. One spell Labyrinth. stall, one's trap control. Yeah, they're both, same. They both do the same thing. Fundamentally, one you can just activate on turn one. They both don't banish <laughs> face down. They both don't banish face down. Face up. Face down. Attack. Attack or defend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that reference. Did you Does not it... get music to door by? No. Oh my god, Ben. They play, Actually, they play fairness, every now and then on the, on the stream. Man, 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 man. In, in fairness, I didn't buy it. I want it. What? Have I ever told you this story? No. Um, you told the pod the story. But yeah, we can do it again. I'm going to tell it again, because that seems to be the spirit of our questions, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so when I was about... <laughs> oh, <this> um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so when I was, I think, seven or so. When Jake was a so wee lad. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, are we at that time where you do fucking accents? Your accents are so bad. You can't do flashbacks without this starting. This is anyway, it's work. my heritage, Jake. 
What isn't your oh. heritage, Ben? Do you really want to get into that in a fucking podcast anyway? <laughs> Not live on YouTube. It's genuinely mine. I have never known for oh. 30, however old I am. Years. <laughs> when Bragg was a wheel at it. Yeah, apparently it is. And I'm like, oh, I kind of always knew, but. Do they say laddie? I don't know if they say laddie. They might say lad. Oh, you might get away with lad. It doesn't matter. I think you're mi mixing up lassie and lad and making it laddie. Ah, it's the same. Anyway. Isn't that just like the Simpsons let's not get sued version of Lassie? No. The Scots haven't copyrighted Lad or Lassie. No, Lassie copyrighted Lassie when she fell down the well. Lassie didn't fall down the well. Yeah, the Lassie saved Lassie. Oh my god. And then Lassie Die. saved Timmy. Just, just go away. Anyway. <laughs> when, anyway, when I was seven... There was a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! marathon on Nickelodeon, and they had a text-to-win competition. Uh, and I texted for as much credit as I had. Gee, those texts cost so much money. Oh, back then, yeah. Cost just, a fortune. They were like $2.50 yeah. a text. Yeah, and it would have sucked if I didn't win, but I did. Okay. So, so I won a, 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 a CD that I could have got from the Salvos for 2 bucks. <laughs> no, no, this was when I was 6 or 7. This was, like, peak Yu-Gi-Oh! time. Yeah, but... You could have just... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I got a CD of music to duel by. Um, I think I did get some packs, but I can't remember what they were. Um, I got a Buster Blader um, Jake, you statue. Jake, you were at minimum nine. Well, I wasn't going to call him on this. Nine-year-old with a phone. I've just run the map. Oh, I had a phone since I was six. Really? Oh, sorry, no. Jake's family in, was rich. In year six. I like how he thinks he's running oh, so the numbers, but he definitely... He, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah you're de and also he's definitely not nine. I, so I, I was thinking... I was thinking <laughs> sorry, I was thinking... Because yeah, I'm like, Yu-Gi-Oh started when you were nine. I was thinking, like, for us. Like, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was but, thinking year seven, and I put that as age. Sorry. Okay. So when I was 13. This competition would have been late 2003, 2004. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who's older, Jake or Soldier Boy? Yeah, who's We've older, Jake that. or Soldier Boy? We've been through Fun that. Fun fact, it's Jake by a week. Anyway. <laughs> That's coming up soon, isn't it? A couple more months. Yeah, yeah Soldier Boy's birthday's in June. Yeah. No, July. Because Jake's older. I was going to say, that, that makes That's sense. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> July 28th is my birthday. Oh! Wait, Soldier you're the Boy. same birthday as Soldier Boy? Yeah. And this doesn't get brought wow. up ever. <laughs> Sol Soldier, wow. Boy is, Soldier Boy's <laughs> first rapper to share a birthday with Seb. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, moving on to our Discord, if you weren't aware, we do have a Discord, link will be in the description below. I am in the middle of my fucking spiel, Ben! Imagine if so Soldier Boy comments being like, get my name out your fucking mouth! <laughs> there was a good period of history where I was convinced Soldier Boy was dead. What are you saying? There was yeah. just a rumour that was like in the early days of the internet where people didn't research things. It was Soldier Boy and Little Bow Wow. They used to always say that those two were dead. Oh. I didn't I... think Bow Wow was dead, I just thought he was irrelevant. Oh, well, I thought he disappeared until he made the, the game console thing with Steam. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I'd never heard of He didn't of make him. it with Steam. No, he made it himself. Oh. And by made it himself, he bought them off AliExpress and slapped a logo on them. Oh. Damn, I'm flaming Soldier Boy. <laughs> Can you play Master Jewel? No, you can play every SNES game that ever came out, though, on the Soldier console. Wait, did Nintendo? Yes, that's that's why. Gotcha. And then he claimed... No, because I only heard about the announcement. I don't remember any legal stuff. Yeah. Really? The legal stuff happened. Um, and then Soldier Boy was like, it's okay, I'm going to buy Atari. <laughs> that didn't happen. Anyway, as I was saying, if you weren't aware, we do have a link uh, for our Discord below. Feel free to jump in and say hi and ask us questions. Uh, so... Our first question this week comes to us from Matthew Mack. Uh, how was your introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh! And what was your very first deck? Also, which archetypes are best suited to teach a couple newbies... Yeah, teach a couple newbies the basics of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so this was a question for last week, Jake. Forgot to read it. Motherfucker. Um, he was reading it from a screenshot, not at Discord. That is down... You can the show link bad hair now. ...description below. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this, you... this is expensive. Don't fuck with me. Oh... Fisty cuffs on the pod for the viewers. Anyway, Ben, viewers. What was your introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh on your first deck? When I viewers was know. a wee laddie. Stop saying laddie. Um, yeah, it was like literally like OG Yu-Gi-Oh. It was like 
show airing on Cheese TV first thing in the morning. And then I was like, I want to buy this. So then I found the first EB games that actually had it, and I bought the structure deck. Which one, though? Uh, Yugi. Mm. Mm. And then when I was a wee laddie, and I was a good boy, uh, my parents bought me the Jinzo tin. Cracked tin. So, like, that Jinzo was so OP. I used to, like, Jinzo was my favorite monster when I was little, so I, all I was like, I want the Jinzo! And they were like... When he was little, uh, he liked to lock down traps. Now that he's grown older, that's all he cares about. Yes. However, yeah, that Jinzo was cool. I, I, got, I got my Jinzo. I was happy. It took a few years, but I got there. Uh, tunes and monsters with 1800 or 2000... Def- 1800 attack or 2000 defense just as tribute materials. And yeah, it was just kind of tune beat down. Didn't really win many games of tunes. It was more of the equip spells and Harpy's brother and stuff. Yeah. Sorry. Mine was, out. I think I was literally <laughs> just playing the starter deck. Yeah, it was the starter, it was, yeah. Because I don't think I was ever, ever had booster packs. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't get many boosters either. Oh, uh, the Kmart, Kmart, the Toys R Us tournament, I think I scored a couple of booster packs from, and that's the story I've told before with Thousand Eyes. Um, and then to introduce to the game, Speed Jewels. Yeah, Speed Jewels is a good way to introduce people. Um, probably a little bit steep at the moment because you have to buy like the eighty dollars. Oh, box. I'm talking like you just both you just buy like the deck that has two decks in it and you just go at they it. They don't make those anymore. I was they haven't say made they those don't. since before COVID. No, but there's still there's still heaps on fucking shelves. Oh, I see them in Kmart. Shelves? Top, oh, I tried to Kmart and stuff. I like, tried to go and find some the other day. And oh, okay. Yeah. I'll keep. I'll let you know when I see them because yeah, there's, I was so close to like some have like you shouldn't be buying it. Blake should be buying it for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Say goodbye to We well, never forget. You owe us the tattoo and speed door cards. <laughs> you should really join him in that tattoo as well. Oh, no, no, not the Moki Moki one. He got the minus 800 before the Moki Moki, yeah? Yeah. Which wasn't the agreement. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, yeah, speed jewels. Oh, some of those old structured decks you could just yeah. go for it. Sam got a tattoo today. What? Did you actually? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. It's okay. He's getting there. That's sick. I'm, 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 Wait, were you out drinking last night? Yes, he was. No, I was smoking. <laughs> okay. Um, you had a perfectly legal revenue to. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> moving right along. Viewers, I uh, have a prescription. He's right. <laughs> it is perfectly legal. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, so my introduction, um, so I started watching the show before anyone else in my, um, immediate friend group, because I was the only one in my immediate friend group that had Ozstar, and Nickelodeon was the only place that was broadcasting it at the time. Um, this was before it was on Cheese TV. Hmm? You seem confused by the timeline. So this is when yeah. I was in year six, which would have been 2002. Yep. So this was before it started is going on. watching it on Ozstar first? I don't know, Ben. This motherfucker sucked at Beyblades and went on to Yu-Gi-Oh! before he's... <laughs> I did. He I did. sucked. Yeah. So, so, 2002 okay. was Beyblades, so, motherfucker! <laughs> so to back up a little bit on that, um, the store where I got my Beyblades from and incidentally my first um, Yu-Gi-Oh! structure deck uh, was like a fake uh, Asian accessory shop. Yeah. Uh, and my Beyblade was fake. So anytime I went up against people that had real oh, Beyblades, just... it just <laughs> fell the fuck apart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the legit ones, especially like one of those, like, like a couple of those big legit ones would just mow them down. Something about <sighs> Beyblades that always confuses me, and this is completely tangential to Beyblades themselves. No, never. Tangential. So, well, like, it has nothing to do with TV show or anything. No, no, I've never heard that word before. I don't know if it's real. Tangential. Yeah, it's runs, runs parallel. That, I, I understand the mechanics of the word. I just. Yeah, anyway. So, tell your story. When you were a wee lad. When I was a wee lad, eh? Stop saying that. Um, we played Beyblades at school, like, heaps. Yeah, everybody mm-hmm. did. And, like, two people that were our friends had, like, the pink one with the spinny middle section and the red one with the spinny middle section. And I was like, I want those ones. So I traded my Beyblades for those ones. Mm-hmm. And that's my story. Trading? Wait, one Beyblade for two Beyblades? No, I traded Beyblade for Beyblade. I think I traded a Drasil and a... The other one. I think Drasil was the one that I had. Yeah, everyone I traded had Beyblade. I traded Beyblades too. What got me? In? Why did I do that? Yeah, I'm also like, why did I? Do I mean, that? I made a good call. I had like the 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 grey small one. I got the big green Master Turtle one. 
Which Speed. didn't win, but it was just fucking cool. It was yeah, big the, and green. The Smitty ones were terrible, but yeah. they spun. Like they they had an internal spinny bit that went different to the rest of the Beyblade. Yeah, and they well, sucked. Well, I think the idea but... of it was like as one was spinning, the other would come and it'd be like a gnash. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But they sucked. But yeah. I had them, and they went spin. Um, on a again, uh, completely different tangent. Um, did, were either of you into Zoids? Yeah. No, I. That's one I missed. I was into Star Wars and. I never shit. had any Zoids merch, but I watched Zoids. So, um, the, around the time that Zoids was like a, a thing, yep. was around the time that I had a job, so I had money. Um, I think I would have been fourteen, maybe. Well, Jake, Zoids existed before this. I know, but when it was like a big thing, for you got to keep in mind we're in different age brackets, so things happen at different times. Yeah, but you're not that much older than me. You're only like four years older than me. That's, that's a fair chunk. 14 and Zoids? I don't remember being 10 for Zoids. Well, maybe we were just into Zoids. Oh, yeah. Like, we were just nerds. We so had, like, like we had a Digimon that. reprise where we all got, grabbed our old Tamagotchis in high school and kind of... Oh, yeah. The, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we dragged that out. So maybe it was a similar situation. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I bought the... Um, what was the flying one before the Pterodactyl? It was a really shit one. Oh, I don't know the names of the Zoids. No. But anyway, I bought that one to, like, put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> so it didn't work at all. <laughs> it, it was so bad. But anyway, that was my tangent. Um, Me looking up deck profiles. <laughs> <laughs> I put it together. It doesn't work. Um, but yeah, my first structure deck was, again, from the fake Asian shop, and it was Pegasus. And for whatever reason, in the early days, it was like approximate to Pegasus, but it wasn't a card for card reprint. So there were cards in there that weren't supposed to be. Um, thousand, was, there, was there a fake Thousand Eyes in there? Uh, I don't think I got Thousand Eyes. I was wondering if it would be like a copy of the Japanese one. That would have been cool. Why did not counterfeits just do that back then? We'll just be all on the board of counterfeits. Where if they just printed like better products. Um, don't worry, counterfeits had their time in Yu Gi Oh! That yeah. had quite a big impact. I want those. <laughs> I, actually, I legitimately want those counterfeits. Like the actual official counterfeits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like Wizards of the Coast ones. No, or the upper deck ones. But it was around that time though. Um, I don't know if you were similar to this, but I think one of you has the same memory of the corner shop at Oak Flats. No? Or is this Blake? Oh, it was Blake. Blake. So in Oak Flats, there was a little corner shop on the main street in Oak Flats, and they just only sold fake Yu Gi Oh cards. Um, the amount of. Uh, Invasion of Nightmare fake packs I brought when I was little it's absurd because that was like the one pack where I'd see the art and I was like that's the one I want I'd go back and I'd just keep buying it I definitely was getting cards that weren't meant to be in that set but yeah but you had no idea I had no idea we um yeah we had a designated store that was Golo perfect everything was like above board at Golo yeah and like yeah the weird store across the highway that was yeah, I mean, it was just a normal tourist shop. Yeah. But then when the markets would come through, we would go and see whoever the, the other people... fakes. Yeah, yeah. We'll go, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll go and try and clear out the market yeah. fakes because it's like, that's where you get Bloor's Ultimate and stuff. It's like, the, the Chinese shop didn't have it. <laughs> the bulk of my collection legitimately came from a guy at Dapto Markets who just... He didn't sell, like, fake packs or anything. He just sat there with binders and they were like... Rip. Yeah. But there, yeah. Was, there was two shops. So there was one inside of that... This is completely irrelevant to anyone who's not from local to us. Um, so at Dapto Markets, there's, like, an un in the undercover area where they do, like, the Greyhound betting and shit whenever yeah. they're doing Greyhound races. And then outside, there was, like, one specific spot, like, under a tree where this guy would just sit with his binders. Yep. The one that was inside the shed would charge, like, four times the amount of money that things were worth. Like, he had, like, just random commons. He'd be like, that's $5. And I was like, the guy outside sells his commons for 50 cents each. I'm just going to go there. And there, and the, he had a fair amount of real ones. I got a, I got a Cyber Dragon off him. Yeah. I was like, I was I don't think I ever got anything that good from him. Yeah, I yeah. It, like, I started going through, going, oh, I'm going to try and make it out to Dapto today. Yeah. <laughs> just quickly swing away. Like, I used to go to Dapto Market to my mom every Saturday. Yeah, see what he's And she'd just up. leave me there for, like, 20 minutes and then come back. And I'm like, this is what I want today, mom. Spend five bucks. Done. It's like swap meets. Yeah, I, I probably should start looking up if they do swap meets again. Because yeah. there's always like that stuff. Another point. With the corner shop at Oak Flats. Like, at the at regular shops, like if you went to Kmart, it was like four bucks for a pack at the time. Mm. This place did three for five dollars. The fuck? Yeah. Fake. They were fake. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I forgot that's about the that value bit. we need. <laughs> also, I mean, three for five bucks. Sure, the quality control isn't as good, but they're also probably using the same amount of cardboard. Just, a, just an idea, yeah. Konami. Come on. <laughs> like, I mean, if you talk to most people, the quality of current print runs is kind of shit anyway. And some of those old counterfeits were bad. That the original fake blue eyes, like, look like shit. My dream is to like lease that corner shop at Oak Flats the next, whenever the business is in there next if that goes out of business I'm gonna like try and rent it for a day and then just sell real Pokemon product out of it uh, real sorry Yu-Gi-Oh product out of it just so they can at least at one point have had real product be sold out of that store <laughs> one day that's a lie he's gonna start selling fakes I'm gonna sell a lot of fakes <laughs> I'll go to Dapto Markets and buy all the current stock that you see and just yeah he's talking up a big game it. now about selling real cards and giving that store a, a touch of honour but now he's just gonna get rid of his darkly big rabbis and yeah. all that nonsense <laughs> I tribute to monsters the summons <laughs> uh, our next question comes to us from Rai Guy uh, what is something in Yu-Gi-Oh that you can only learn, learn with time and experience uh, what misses timing legitimately yeah what and if differences yeah um, when if you can or no you, you can't do this this says you can but no you can't yeah not anymore uh reads like seeing yeah, like yeah sequencing. i still don't care about my reads i should just don't i don't have the you know Would... ability to read people Why? it's a lot easier in a mirror match like, because you can put yourself in that position and be like, oh, okay, if I've done this, that means I have X. I legitimately just activate cards and go, oh, you didn't negate it? <laughs> ben oh, goes, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Reads can go so wrong, though, so. Yeah, like, I like decks that can, like, hard play around the bureau on, like, five summons because then I don't have to worry about it. If I can get to that, like, ability to then play around the bureau, I'll just, like, four summons, okay, I can I can no longer be in the bureau. Oh. This is fine. Off I go. Whatever game was on stream, whether it was a replay or something, don't make Flair as your fifth summon. There's no, there's absolutely no world that Flair should be a fifth summon, right? Yeah, no. I just wouldn't go for a fifth summon. Yeah. Because Flair doesn't trigger like Tax Dragon, does it? No, it's it like only once it resolves. Yeah. Sure, yeah. you push for something else that can deal with the Nibiru. If you don't have anything else, it's not worth the risk. So, if you've passed the Nib point, sure, bring out Flair. Why oh, not? Oh, yeah. If you're but, like, I don't give a fuck anymore. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, I'm not even playing this for, man. Even that's... Mm. That's, a, that's a rough summon. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna skip ahead. Uh, Nayo, skip ahead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nayo has asked if we could pass the lollies. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you could have grabbed them. You're not within camera yeah, shot. This wouldn't have been a shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Any time. Well, even if you have a. <laughs> yeah. The other Open two have walked, The other two would um, walk through um, shots. Yeah, I'm fairly sure the shot ends here. So if anyone walks past, you can barely see them. Ooh. And now she's throwing lollies. Floor lolly. Oh no, last time Blake hit someone off the floor, it was died of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a floor, floor nugget. <laughs> the floor nugget podcast. Um, floor. so yeah, um, to answer the question. <laughs> floor nugget podcast. I don't know, this, that's not as appealing. Oh, hold on. Spin-off pod? <laughs> floor nuggets. Oh my god. How about you get low res off the ground first before you start making spin-off podcasts? Why anyway. don't pump it on the right? Actually, I haven't looked at the viewership. I, 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 guess, right. Actually, I, found I have no day. idea I, I decided I'm gonna go digging and I found it I was like subscribing number 5 oh yeah. my god it's, it's really Jesus. <laughs> anyway um, so yeah sequencing is a big thing um, learning when to interrupt like recognising where bottlenecks of particular strategies are and oh, knowing I, I where to drop stuff I don't until the end of the format the, the bottleneck is you activated brand infusion I ash yeah, well, that one's really clear. That yeah. one's, like, abundantly clear. Uh, like, Bottlenecks and Drytron? Wouldn't know. And I'm never gonna learn. It's the XYZ <laughs> info. Yes. Yeah. No, I learned that uh, you wait for them to activate the field spell, uh, the ritual spell, and then you Nibiru them. They lose. Oh, yeah, that's kind of fun. Yep, they lose. But also, they can set up a negate before then. Uh, back then, they couldn't. Anyway, um, <laughs> and it's not so much to do with the game as it is to do with like an outside part of the game. Um, learning when and when not to make deals. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 
when you're first in the game, it's very easy to get sort of talked into trading or buying or oh. selling a card for X amount of money. Yeah, um, yeah, whereas yeah. as you get more into it, you realise, oh, I don't think I'm getting the best value here. I'm going to say no. Like, like 95% of my bulk collection is from the first six months me playing again once I had disposable income. It's just like, I was just like, oh, this is this seems really good. I'm going to buy it. Spend like five bucks on a Santa Claus. <laughs> To be fair, I actually think that's now a wise investment. I think those go those gold rare. Well, they've not been, been reprinted before. Um, oh, it's been reprinted. Oh, it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but like people are playing it now because are they? It's, uh, it's I don't know. It's there's a reason why you can play it to out um, cash hero. Yeah, well, if you tribute over rise heart, its effect activates your opponent draws a card and then your thrusting's life. Yeah, that's a thing. It also doesn't take you normal summon. That too. Um, yeah. Uh, but they draw a card. Yeah. Kaiju with extra bits. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Before I forget, shout out to Jesse in our Discord. You're a real one. Thank you. Just Any in, particular in, reason? In, in, in the pools and mouths. Just being a good community person. No, he's, yeah. he's very good. Um, and 6i6 as well. He's quite good. Um, speaking of which, uh, 6i6 has the next question. Uh, which Yu Gi Oh card art do you think has the sassiest pose? It's it's um it's it's golden lord. It's all type golden lord. <laughs> yeah, there's but not, that's not a there's not many sassier than that. Uh, Tonight is submissions, quite good. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite sassy. Uh, Jerry Benzman. Yeah. Sassy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sassy is hard. I it's... don't think so. There's like arrogant stuff. There's yeah, a lot. Which... Yeah, that's not really sassy though. For the crowd, Seb has said witchcraft or unveiling. I don't know if he has that. And when? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of got her in a oh, position so where she's got her arms yeah, crossed yeah. and she's sort of looking Hate down smugs. on you. But I, yeah, oh, she's the queen of smug. I fuck every time she hits the board, I'm like, fuck that smug bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah. yeah. Is sassy. yeah. Even yeah. his even his original pose, you could probably say is sassy. His fucking high heels that he steps on you with. <laughs> Well, you can't see it in the original art. Oh, yeah, it's just in the master door. <laughs> in master, like... Yeah, yeah. Have it's a look just... at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> they rolled out that, um... The draft drawings of that. Or the reference drawings. They rolled yeah. out his reference drawings so fast as well. as like, by the way, he has boots. By, by the way, he has a fetish. <laughs> 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 this yeah, yeah. zombie floodgate deck. He has a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> There's a piece after sassy rookie. Sassy rookie? Is he in a sassy pose though? Or is it just that he's got, he's got sassy, sassy in the name? Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, oh. I think the title has to go to Lord. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so, our final question uh, comes to us from 6 r 6 again. What is your favourite cocktail? Oh, I don't really have a favourite cocktail. Do you not? I guess it's a Long Island iced tea. Yeah. That's a cocktail. <laughs> I wouldn't um, count that as a cocktail. I would say that's uh, the shortcut to a blackout. Yeah. <laughs> Those things are ludicrous. Yeah, so Bragg makes a great one. <laughs> Literally a year ago, like, last week, he made me wonder, like, by the time... So I drank it, and then left the party that was here to oh, go yeah. to a different party. And I was, like, on the side of the road waiting for my pickup. Just, like, I thought I saw the yellow wiggle. <laughs> 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 yeah, was, a dude walked past that was like tall, lanky, in a long sleeve yellow shirt, and I was like, "That's the yellow wiggle." <laughs> <laughs> they're, a bit, they're a bit on the strong side. Well, I can't That no, was good. I mean, yours would be. But I hope it tastes alright. The that was great. I, yeah, the the lime you really got to not be generous with, but no, you got to rely on it. Don't do a long island without lime. Yes. Uh, uh, what, yeah, what else would there be? What else is a good cocktail? Um, mine's between two. So mine's either an espresso martini yeah, or yes. an amaretto sour. Yes. Yeah. Jake has not... both of them every Halloween. Was that the one we had at the thingy? The one you had at Halloween, yeah. Not Halloween. Oh, no? Blake's birthday. Did we have one? What was that drink you got? And then I got it. It was like... I don't what, think when so. we were at Breakout Bar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no
Oh no, you mean when we were at um, oh, Be Lucky and Sons? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Welcome to. Our was it a cocktail? Room. Cocktail? Like, was it in the short no, glass? Was, it was a small glass, but it was some weird drink. I don't know what it was. It might have been that, or it might have just been um, this uh, passion fruit liqueur and solo that that's Tom it, gets. That's it. What was that? Yeah, um, I can't remember what it's called. I always forget. Oh, I like pina coladas as well. If you I like pina coladas, cannot stand dun, dun, pina coladas. Dun, dun. Yeah, I hate coconut, like actual coconut. I went like I went pretty deep into them at a point where then there was like a Powerade version that had like probably a coconut and like the right flavorings where you could just go, oh, sick. And you can make a cold in the rain. Yeah, you can make a uh, a Powerade pina colada. <laughs> it works on every level. Well, it worked on every level. They discontinued it. It always happens. Logan Paul, get on that. Give me, um, give me whatever that flavor yeah. was. And what's his drink called? Uh, Prime. Prime. Yeah, give it's, us, it's over there. Give us pina colada Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh wow, I drank a fair bit of this. Yeah. What did it taste like? Blue. <laughs> it, it tastes like blue. That was literally his review. Yeah, this one tastes like blue. The other one tastes like Dr Pepper. He's like, no, oh, this is blue. Yeah, it just tastes like blue. How much did you pay for it? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, on resale or retail? Look, and what made me feel... <laughs> the fact, that, <laughs> <answer> that. <laughs> the fact no, no. that drinks are reselling is ridiculous. Nah, these were five bucks each. Retail? Yeah, Woolies. Yeah, we were like, they were on the side. But, but you can't get them at Woolies anymore. Like, they just People sell just out People just go and buy them all. Yeah, well, I had a woman at work was... ask me, if anyone <laughs> sees them, <laughs> I will pay you for them. <laughs> Like, and them scooter kids, they took the other flavors. <laughs> they rode in there on their razors. Uh, it well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I would not pay five dollars for this. It was they didn't have but the price did. tag on there. Well, I, didn't run to it. <laughs> I scanned them and went, That's the thing, they didn't have the price tag on them because they yeah. know they're all just going to disappear. Yeah, What's the I point? scanned them and went, Ugh. <laughs> All right, I've come this far. I'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting this back on the shelf. Is it a dollar per hundred mils? Yeah. All the Americans won't know what I just said. Yeah. Except maybe dollar. Yeah. This one isn't that, like the, this doesn't this isn't the one that kills you. It's the energy drink one that kills you apparently. And I want it. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Best before. See neck of bottle. Oh, here we go. Oh, I can leave this little bit till December. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how that works at all <laughs> oh god okay uh that does conclude us uh for this week's podcast thank you all very much for listening and watching if you are listening along feel free to favorite if you're watching on youtube like and subscribe um, as i said discord's in the link below feel free to jump in and ask us questions for next week and we will see you all then Oh, hang on. Uh, me and Blake will probably have a Pokemon podcast to elaborate on some of that stuff as well. I imagine Ben will probably be keen on it as well. Yeah, I'll jump in. Yeah. I'll have a chat. I'll that's that's to lock it complaints. in, so now Blake will have to. Yeah, we say things on here now to commit to them. <laughs> and then does not commit to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, real. I thought Brad was complaining we are doing this tonight. I was like, oh, fuck, fuck no. <laughs> we've, got, um, we've got London to work. Yeah. There's a London. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, peace. Bye.